Releasing a sports game annually whilst innovating and improving on the previous entry is quite a hard task. Sports games cannot deviate too much from their core formula and must rely on enhancing how the game presents that formula. F1 2020 is no different, but what separates it from last year's game and is it a worthy purchase? Well, before I answer that, we need to talk about COVID-19. The pandemic has affected our way of life and this is no different for game companies. F1 2020 is in fact one of the first examples of a COVID game. Assuming development for F1 2020 started the day after F1 2019 was released, approximately 22% of development time was during lockdown. And this was at the final stage of development, which is arguably the most important. Does it show? Unfortunately, yes. F1 2019 had one or two bugs, but nothing game breaking. I'm going to list just some of the bugs players have experienced in F1 2020. Mechanical failures don't result in safety cars. Headless characters. Assets not rendering properly or at all. The game sometimes fails to recognize different tire compounds and black flags the player. Not all AI do hot laps at the end of Q1 and Q2. The fastest lap is broken in multiplayer. The podium pass didn't work at launch. Black screens on PC. Abhorrent gearbox wear. And scripted qualifying times. These are just some of the bugs other players and I have experienced. Will you have all these bugs? No, but it's unfair not to mention them. Codemasters also weren't helped by the Formula 1 season being postponed until literally four days before release. This meant that there was no way to gauge the performance of each car and therefore they had to use last season's data and testing to guess. As well as that, several teams changed their car liveries in the weeks leading up to release. In both these cases, it's understandable that they aren't in the game yet. And so you may ask, well, is it understandable that bugs are present in the game considering the effect lockdown would have had? I think it is understandable, but I have two questions. One, should we as consumers pay full price for a game that has significant issues at launch? And two, if the game wasn't 100% ready, why was it not delayed? I don't have the answers for either question because there are so many factors at play, but I fear that F1 2020 is the first of many games that were released this year that will greatly suffer from this pandemic. For example, the WWE franchise will not release a game this year at all. I worry for those that will, especially sports games. It's quite frustrating because if you ignore the bugs, F1 2020 is absolutely fantastic. Like all annual releases, many aspects remain the same each year. However, the major addition this time around is my team. Simply put, you are the 11th team on the grid. You pick a name, engine supplier, livery, sponsor, teammate, and even race suit. The customization options here are disappointing, though hopefully a full livery editor will arrive next year. After all that, you are interviewed by the press and are presented with your team headquarters. This is where you control your team off the track. You can schedule activities for your staff or drivers, upgrade your car, improve your facilities, and even shop for a better driver. There's a lot to manage here, and it's important to spend your cash and resource points wisely. Do you hire a better driver or a better engine? Do you spend resource points on improving your durability or your chassis? It's these types of choices that makes replayability possible. This, along with the variety of each race weekend, driver transfers, changes in team performance, regulation changes, etc., makes my team an experience that will have you aching to play one more race. Speaking of racing, the AI this year are far more aggressive and much improved upon. Sometimes you simply have to concede the position, whereas in F1 2019, you could unrealistically defend from many faster opponents. Race starts are far more balanced. The AI pace in the wet is still a little unfair, but nonetheless improved upon. And the AI can make mistakes, which can cost them positions. This adds a new layer of unpredictability 
to the racing. Many tracks have been revamped to replicate their real life counterparts, and the AI no longer makes stupid mistakes at certain corners. Examples being Turn 1 at Suzuka and Turn 3 at Baku. ERS has been redesigned to better suit racing. It's now mostly on auto, except when you need to push, you can use the overtake button, though this quickly drains your ERS. It's a welcome change compared to previous years, where changing ERS happened at every corner and was quite a hassle. Customizable head-up displays are now available to console, and there are new casual assists to ensure that, that audience feels welcome and not overwhelmed by the complexities of Formula 1. This, along with the introduction of split screen, enables F1 2020 to market to a wider audience and is a nice feature for classic couch play. On the competitive scene, there is an issue regarding controllers. Simply put, they are faster than wheels and this should never be the case. Speaking of which, this was my first time using a wheel and the handling model is very impressive and it's especially exciting when qualifying. The car is at its maximum and you can really feel the power of the engine and a ridiculous grip in the tyres. As with the original Formula 1 calendar, two new tracks have been introduced, Zandvoort and Hanoi. Zandvoort has tremendous fun with massive undulation and terrific high speed corners. Hanoi on the other hand, I hate. This is no fault of Codemasters, but my god is it such an awkward and brutal track to drive on. Then again, it doesn't help when your online opponents are as ignorant as you'd expect them to be. You should know that by being a racing driver, you are under risk all the time. By being a racing driver means you are racing with other people. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. Online is as you were. There is still no long-term punishment for driving like an absolute idiot. It's not a fun place to be if you're not in the top 5% of players. Because you'll be put into a lobby with 19 other Maldonados who torpedo themselves into every corner. Sadly for me, I'm serious enough to want to play the game properly, but not good enough to race competitively. At least the AI fills that void. So is F1 2020 worth picking up? Well I think in its current state, it's an 8 out of 10. This is due to the amount of bugs present that really prevent the game from reaching its full potential. Having said that, you won't experience all the bugs I mentioned, so who knows. I do believe however, that after a month or two, these bugs will be addressed, and once they are, F1 2020 can be upgraded to an easy 9 out of 10. If you're watching this in the weeks, or even months ahead, check out the updates they've brought out since and read the patch notes to see what has been fixed. If you're watching now, just be wary of the fact that you are not buying a complete product, but rather 97 or 98% complete. Anyway, I hope you found this review helpful, and let me know if there are any upcoming games you'd also like me to review. Thanks for watching.